بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ہوپ یو آل ڈوئنگ ویل ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس دس لیکچر از فار گریڈ سیون بوائز اینڈ گرلس بوتھ ونگس سبجیکٹ سائنس اینڈ ان دس چیپٹر وی ول ڈسکس دا ریمیننگ ٹاپکس آف چیپٹر نمبر ٹین وچ از اباؤٹ دا ساؤنڈ ویوز دس از مائی ٹوینٹی ایٹ لیکچر اینڈ آئی ایم یور لیکچرر مسز سائرا جمال The topic is the basic terms to understand waves. The first important term about waves is wavelength. What is wavelength? A wavelength is the shortest distance between two adjacent crests or troughs of a transverse wave. In our previous topic, we discussed about the types of waves, transverse wave and longitudinal wave. Transfer wave, in case of transfer waves, the highest point from the resting position, this line indicates the resting position and this time indicates the highest position of wave, which is called amplitude. Also, this highest position is called crest. This distance is called amplitude, but the position is called crest. The lowest position from the mean position or from the resting position is called trough. The highest position, crest. The lowest position, trough. And the distance between two adjacent, two adjacent or two closed crest, if we consider the two crest, it is called wavelength. Or if we consider the two uh, adjacent trough, it is also called wavelength. So the distance between two adjacent or two closed crest or two closed or adjacent trough is called wavelength in case of the longitudinal wave wavelength definition is different in case of the longitudinal wave in wave there are compression and rarefaction you can see compression compressed form of the wave and rarefaction the relaxed form of the wave so the distance between two adjacent compressions or two adjacent rarefaction is called wavelength you can see the distance between the two compression this is compression and then the adjacent compression is this one so the distance between two adjacent compression or distance between two adjacent rarefaction you can consider this rarefaction and also this rarefaction the distance between these two adjacent or closed or nearby rarefaction is called wavelength so in case of the transverse wave the distance between two adjacent crest or adjacent trough is called wavelength while in case of the longitudinal wave the distance between two adjacent or closed or nearby compression or rarefaction is also called wavelength what is the unit of wavelength or how we will measure the wavelength the unit which we use to measure the wavelength is meters second important term of the waves is amplitude what is amplitude amplitude of a wave is the maximum distance of the particles of the medium from the rest position we can also say that it is the height of a crest or depth of a trough the maximum this line this green line it represented the resting position so the distance of the particles particles definitely is uh like that of a wave so the distance distance of the particles or of the wave from the resting position is called amplitude you can see this is amplitude and this maximum position or this highest position is also called crest 
so the distance of crest from the uh, mean position or resting position or the distance of trough you can also consider the distance of trough from the mean position or from the resting position it is also called amplitude amplitude is not only the distance of the uh, particles from the resting position or the maximum distance no, uh, not only the maximum distance also you can say the minimum distance or the trough position of the trough of the distance of the trough from the resting position or from the mean position it is also called amplitude so amplitude of a wave is the maximum distance of the particles of the medium from the rest position we can also say that it is the height of a crest or depth of a trough in case of the transverse wave and measured from the resting position. I told you the green line. This green line represented the resting position. And what is the unit of amplitude? Amplitude is measured in meters. Same like wavelength. Another important term is frequency. What is, what is frequency? The number of vibrations produced by a vibrating body in one second is called its frequency. Let us see this image. So this is position one, like this is one second time. You can see here one, one, one. So this along x axis represented the time, which is one second. Now see the vibration produced in one second. We have three types of waves. The, in case of the first wave, you can see the number of vibrations produced in one second are least vibrations. Then in case of the second wave, the number of vibrations produced in one second, although are greater than wave one, but they are still lesser, least lesser vibration. And then we can see here the greatest number of vibrations produced in one second. You can see here, this is one second and you can see the number of vibrations produced by a wave in one second, that is wave three, which are 30 Hertz. Hertz, H, Z represent Hertz, H, E, R, T, Z, Hertz. And we represent symbolically hz and this is the unit of frequency 30 hertz vibrations are or you can say the frequency of this wave 3 is 30 hertz because it produces a greatest number of vibrations in one second 20 hertz is the frequency of the second wave and only 10 hertz is the frequency of the first wave so the number of vibration produced by a vibrating body in one second will tell us its frequency so the frequency of which wave is greatest definitely the frequency of this wave three is greatest then after this is the second wave and the frequency of the first wave is lesser the least frequency is of wave number wave one because it is producing least number of vibration in one second this line this is one second so the number of vibrations produced by a vibrating body in one second is called is frequency frequency is measured in unit called hertz symbolically presented as hz when one wave passes in one second the frequency is one wave per second or one hertz like definitely if one wave passes we call it that the frequency of that uh, wave is um, one hertz. Speed. You can see in this image the thundering and thundering sound uh, and the lightning, lightning and thundering of cloud. And you have experienced it that always during the a flash of lightning and thundering of cloud first we see the flash of lightning and after a few seconds we uh, heard, we uh, heard the thunder so what is the reason why first we see the flash of lightning and then a few seconds later we hear the thunder what is the reason behind it 
it actually depends upon the speed of light and the speed of sound so imagine watching a flash of lightning and thundering of cloud first we see the flash of lightning a few seconds later we, see, we hear thunder why this happen this happens because sound and light travel at different speeds which one have greater speed light travels much faster than sound that's why we first see the flash of lightning because the speed of light is much faster than the speed of sound definitely due to this reason first we see the light flash of lightning and then after a few seconds we hear thunder now different waves travel at different speeds the distance a wave covers in unit time is called its speed how could you define the speed speed the distance a wave cover in unit time is called its speed unit time means in one second unit means one time you can use second so the distance a wave covers in unit time is called its speed so uh, we can say that we can we could measure the speed in meters per second meter is for distance and second is the unit of time so speed is distance per time distance per time or if you use the unit it is meters per second sound travels at different speed in different mediums like you can see in this table speed of sound in different medium the speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second meter per second meter we use small uh, we represent it by small m and for the second we use sec sec means second so meter per second is the unit of speed speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second water 1500 in brick 3600 in wood 3800 and the maximum speed or the highest speed is in steel means in metal which is 6000 meter per second so if someone asks you that uh, in which medium the speed of sound is maximum, so definitely it is the metal which is steel. Now let us uh, have a look toward the extent you are thinking. When sound waves travel from air to water, what will happen to the speed at which they are moving? as i told you in case of the metal the speed of sound is maximum what is the reason behind a so you will get the answer of that uh, uh, like uh, issue that why the speed of uh, sound is maximum in metal than in water or in air the reason is due to the close packing of particles or the or the um, more, or greatest number of particles in water the particles are much closer together in that case in the metal the particles are much closer together and they can quickly transmit vibration energy from one particle to the next this means that the sound wave travels over four times faster than it would in air but it takes a lot of energy to start the vibration. And oh, one more example is that there are about 800 times more particles in a bottle of water than in a bottle filled with air. So more particles in case of water, definitely there will be greater uh, transmission of vibrational energy from one particle to the next and hence uh, have greater or have louder sound in case of uh, water than uh, as compared to air the sound waves travel much faster in water than they do in the air and then uh, far, uh, greatest or fastest in case of the solids relationship of speed wavelength and frequency relationship mostly represented by using a formula formula is actually it uh, it will tell us about the relationship of uh, speed wavelength and frequency 
So here also we have a formula, the speed, wavelength and frequency of a wave are related to each other by a mathematical formula. Formula of speed is speed is equal to wavelength into frequency. Uh, if you want to find out or to calculate the speed uh, for this, you must know the value of wavelength and frequency. And suppose if you want to find out the wavelength, so we must know the speed and frequency value. If you want to find out frequency, then we must know the value of wavelength and speed. So we can calculate any one of the three values if we know the other two. Science, Technology and Society on October 14, 1947, Captain Chuck Yeager of USA became the first person to fly a plane faster than the speed of sound. And then 50 years later on October 15, 1997, Andy Green drove his jet powered car at 339 meters per second his speed was faster than the speed of sound. Definitely how he designed that car. He designed that car by using the jet powered engine in his car and he used two jet powered engine in his car and that's why his uh, jet powered car uh, like he drew it or he drove it at a speed 339 meters per second which is faster than the speed of sound. Edible frequency range, edible. Edible means able to be heard. That frequency we, which we can hear. Our ears cannot hear sounds of all frequencies. The range of frequency which a person can hear is known as edible frequency range. And uh, a healthy human ear can hear sounds of frequency from range. The range is from about 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. It is the edible frequency range for humans. Now different animals have different edible frequency ranges. On the living organism, they have different frequency ranges as you can see in this table. Like the edible frequency range of dog is 20 to 45,000 hertz, means greater than human beings. We have 20,000 hertz, but they have uh, the range greater than 20,000 hertz, it is still 45,000 hertz. For cat, is from 45 to 64,000, cow, 23 to 35,000, horses. 55 to 33,000, dolphin 150 to 150,000, red 200 to 76,000, and from bat 2,000 to 110,000, and for elephant it is from 1 to 20,000. So these are the frequency ranges or edible frequency ranges of different animals. We have uh, extend your thinking. When a little boy blows a dog whistle, his dog comes, even though the boy can't hear the whistle. Like we, the human beings, are unable to hear the dog whistle, but the dog, uh, the dog can hear the whistle. So, what is the reason? Explain why the boy can't hear the whistle, but his dog can. The reason is the edible frequency ranges. The dog whistle which sounds silent to us produces sounds in the 45 kilohertz. In kilohertz it is 45 kilo. Kilo means you have to put three zeros. So you can also write 45,000 hertz. Or you can write instead of the three zero kilo. 45 kilohertz or 45,000 hertz. As I told you in the table, 45,000 hertz, but here it is mentioned 45 kilohertz because that is in hertz only, and this one is in kilohertz. So kilo means three zeros, 45,000 hertz or 45 kilohertz range that dogs can hear. Dogs have better hearing 
uh, than U bands. We have only 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz, but the dog's range is still 45,000 hertz or 45 kilohertz. So because they can hear these high frequency sounds and they can hear sounds from farther away, this is because of the way their ears are designed. This is just, uh, you can say, God gifted. God uh, designed the ears of different creatures uh, and then they have the ability to hear the sounds of different frequency ranges. Same is over here. Pitch and loudness. Uh, every day we hear a great variety of sounds. <clears throat> we enjoy some sounds. Some sounds are undesirable. Sounds produced by radio, television, and musical instruments are enjoyed. They are pleasant sounds. Sounds produced by machines, traffic, on the road, etc. are undesirable. How can we distinguish between the sounds? So pitch and loudness, these are the two characteristics that help us to decide whether a sound is pleasant or not. So you can see here we have a pitch and a lower pitch, you can see lower pitch and you can see higher pitch. If you remember, I told you in the previous case that the uh, frequency is the number of vibrations produced by a vibrating body in one second is called frequency. So it means that uh, pitch is also related with the frequency. Now you can see uh, least frequency, lower pitch, more frequency, higher pitch. So the voice of a girl is more shrill than the voice of the boy. And this difference is due to the pitch. A shrill sound is called a high pitch, shrill sound, high pitch. And uh, whereas a less sound is called a low pitch sound. The sound of girls, they are more shrill or more louder than that of the boys. The reason is the pitch. Pitch is the highness or lowness of a sound, how high the sound is, how loud the sound is. So pitch of the sound depends on the frequency of the sound. As I told you, you can see in this image, least frequency or less frequency, lower pitch. More frequency or greater frequency, higher pitch. Pitch of the sound depends on the frequency of the sound wave. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch is and the, the louder will be the sound. We can understand the frequency and pitch of the sound by using this activity. Uh, rotate the wheel of your bicycle and then touch a piece of cardboard to the spokes. These are called spokes. These metallic bars which are uh, fixed in the wheel of a bicycle are called spokes. Touch the cardboard to the spokes and you will listen to uh, the sound produced. And when you increase the speed of the rotating wheel and again you touch the cardboard to the spokes of the wheel, you will listen a louder sound. When you rotate the wheel slowly, you will hear slow sound. But when you will rotate the wheel with a greater speed and when you touch the cardboard, you will hear a louder sound. So we observe that on increasing the speed of the wheel, the sound becomes more shrill or more louder due to increase in its frequency. Because when you rotate the wheel, the spokes will rotate or vibrate with a greater speed. More vibration means greater frequency and then greater frequency means greater pitch. Greater pitch means more shrill or more louder sound. So the sound becomes more shrill due to increase in its frequency. In other words, we can say that the pitch of the sound has increased. I told you, pitch of sound increase being the frequency of the sound increases. So more frequency of the wave, greater will be the pitch of the sound. We have one more activity for making high and low pitch sound. 
take five empty glasses, a spoon and uh, put water in each glass. Put different amounts of water in each glass and carefully tap each glass with the spoon. Observe what you hear. Arrange the glasses from the lowest to the highest sound or you can say the glass which has least water, then little more water, then more, more and the uh, greatest amount of water. Then questions are which glass has the lowest pitch sound or low sound and which glass has the highest pitch sound. The glasses with different amount of water make different sounds. We hear sounds because of the air around us vibrates. So carrying the sound to our ears, uh, hitting the glass causes it to vibrate and make a sound that we can hear. When a glass has little or no water in it, it has lots of air in it. So hitting this glass will make uh, a higher pitch sound than the glass with lots of water. Why this happen? This is because that the empty glass only has air around it. So the glass vibrates quickly when it is hated and causing the high pitch sound. The glass full of water causes the glass to produce the low pitch sound because the air, uh, the air uh, vibrates slowly and which causes the glass to vibrate slowly because full glass has more water in it and then it will vibrate the glass slower while the, em the glass, empty glass or which is letter glass, it has more air in it and the more air will vibrate with a greater frequency, greater frequency, greater pitch, louder sound. And the sound you hear is at a lower pitch in case of the full glass. Loudness. Sometimes we need to uh, shout in a louder voice. We have to use an extra energy. So loudness is related to the amplitude of a sound. The larger the amplitude, the louder will be the sound. And loudness helps us to distinguish a soft sound from a loud sound of the same frequency. Now you can see here in this case, in the first case, the amplitude is greater than the distance of the crest from the resting position is greater. While in this case, the distance of the crust or the trough from the resting position is lower. Amplitude is lower. In this case, amplitude is greater. Greater amplitude, greater loudness, higher frequency, and greater pitch or shrill sound. While smaller amplitude or lesser amplitude will produce uh, uh, these uh, slow sound or the sound which has lesser loudness it has lesser frequency lesser pitch and the, the sh uh, it will be least shrill not more shrill sound making sound it is not difficult to make sound but it is sometimes difficult to see what is happening when sounds are made spoon sound you can hit the spoon on an empty bowl and you can listen the sound and you can try it on different objects Ruler sound, hold one end of a steel ruler on the edge of a table, push down the other edge of the ruler and then let it go and try to hear the sound. The sound of the wind instrument which is also called flute. A flute is a wind instrument and the flutist has to blow it to make music. Flutes are hollow tubes and with a mouthpiece and a series of holes in it. The holes can be closed to control the length of the vibrating column of air inside the tube. The air which is inside the tube, it, uh, its speeds can be controlled by closing and opening the holes which are designed on the flute. A flute can be made of wood, metal and plastic. The flutist changes the sound by opening and closing the holes in the flute and you can enjoy the sound or the music in, of the flute. Application of different sounds. Sounds are very important in our life. Uh, we use many devices which produces different sounds like doorbell. Sound of a doorbell indicates that someone is at the door. Siren warn us about danger, telephone, uh, attract our attention to attend the person online, radio we listen to music, news, etc. on a radio, radio, security system alarm. Some buildings are fitted with security system alarm and the alarm produces sound to alert people to the danger. Even in our car we have security alarm and if um, some unknown person may open the door of the car then the security alarm uh, it rings and uh, and uh, alarm us or alert us about the danger 
smoke detector you can see in this image a smoke detector produces a numbing sound on detecting smoke or fire you can see this is a um, smoke detector and any smoke or of the fire producing any a house so this will detect the smoke and it will start alarming us about the danger so uh, dear students uh, as i told you that application of different sounds how to produce different sounds and uh, how can we detect them and uh, what are their effects all we discussed uh, in this chapter and then we have the extend your thinking which is about the sound waves sound waves need a material medium to travel in a science fiction movie a nearby spaceship explode you hear the explosion is this realistic no it is not realistic because any zoom and explosion you may hear, uh, you may heard in movies about our outer space is not realistic. Because sound need material medium to travel and there is no air in space. So sound actually can't travel in vacuum. So it is totally wrong. Then society technology and science sound wave with frequency above the normal human range is 20,000 hertz of pairing are called ultrasound. The sound waves which have frequency below 20 hertz are called infrasound waves. Doctors use ultrasound to examine a patient internally. Internal structure, internal parts of the body can be examined through ultrasound. And the manufacturers of concrete slab, they also use ultrasound to check the cracks in their slabs. And you can see here that the sound range is from uh, below 20 hertz. We are unable to hear it, but the animals like the elephant, uh, they can hear this sound range. And the sound range greater than 20 hertz, I told you, uh, the dog can hear it and the bats can hear that sound. But we have the range only from 20 to 20 hertz. We, this range is called edible frequency range range below and the range above we cannot hear but the animals can hear that range so dear students hope you will understand this lecture about the sound waves inshallah in our next lecture we will start the new chapter until then god bless you take care allah